Uh, soon we'll be hearing from the Moose, who was at Chelsea's press conference, and we have the Falls panel sort of come in this hour, and obviously clips of the week and lots more. Uh, before that, it's time to welcome our studio guest. Um, he's the Tramier, uh, Tramier chairman and the former FA chief exec, and he's joined us to tell us about the first ever futsal business conference. I'm talking about Mark Palios. Mark, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for coming in. So let's start with that, the first ever futsal business conference. Tell me more. Yeah, I mean, futsal is, is I think we're, we're well behind the eight ball in this country on futsal. It's, it's one of the fastest growing indoor sports in the world. And it's not just that it's a fast indoor growing sport. It has implications for football and for football development when you see players like Coutinho, players like Messi, etc. All of the Hispanic players who have come through, who have, most of them, I would say, have actually played futsal in the early days. So it does have a, 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 a role to play in developing footballers. But on top of that i mean if you look at the expansion of the sport it's i believe it's replacing um football in the under 18 um youth olympics uh in um in, in a couple of years time and, and there you see that I mean, the fifa have, have latched onto it to some extent that's not necessarily a good thing but uh but fifa are, are, have embraced it uefa have embraced it let, but in this country we don't let me ask for people listening that don't really understand what futsal is about yeah it's 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 an indoor game, and people mistake it sometimes for just a variation of free form five aside. But it it, it it evolved in South America in the 1920s, and they were playing with a heavy ball on on uh, not on grass pitches, etc. And what it does, it automatically creates you. You have lots. You have lots more contacts with the ball. It's not up in the air, bouncing up in the air like a normal five-a-side ball. Sometimes it does when you go down to the sports center, etc. So you're forced to control the ball. And some of the stats that come out are amazing. You you get something I think like um, five times more touches on a ball than you do in five-a-side. So you know it's much more efficient. It makes you. It's faster. It uh, makes your decision making uh, better. So you can see players like Coutinho today and Messi who have these uh, these. Um, high quality skills as it were uh, and, and it's derived I think from, 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 from their background in playing futsal how do schools feel about it here? Is, is it, are any of them playing it? Are any of them open to playing it? Not so much, and, and interestingly, and, and, and the, we, we have developed it with schools on, on the world because I think you have to get some focus around it because it doesn't have any impetus na naturally around the country. But interestingly, we're doing stuff in China. Now, China, um, when you look at them developing their grassroots, uh, this is, this is Trammer uh, uh, doing stuff in China, they... Um, they don't have the 150 years history of developing cl a club a club sides outside of 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 the of the school system. So we have in this country x forty thousand clubs. I think it was when I was at the FA. Uh, not the professional clubs that everybody focuses on, but all the you know the, the Sunday teams, etc. The pyramid. You know, yeah, the, the, the pyramid, and, and and a very broad based grassroots mm. pyramid. Did, did, that doesn't exist in China, and to build that is well. I suppose they built the Great Wall of China so yeah. they can do anything. But, but, to, but so what they've actually decided to do is they're pushing it down the educational systems. They're pushing everything through their their schools. So they, are, I think, they have a chance of very quickly making progress. Mm. Uh, but well, in this country, we don't have that. We have the, the, the schools FA has tended to sort of wither on the vine a little bit. Mm. When I went to St George's about a year ago, I saw the futsal pitch there. I just wonder how um, how highly regarded do people like the FA to Premier League clubs, how do they see futsal? Do they see it as quite important as to where the English game could be going? You mentioned Coutinho and Messi, so it obviously has a purpose to improve the, the ball skills of a player. Do, do clubs, are they ignorant to it? Are they aware of it but they just choose not to use it or what? Where are they at? at well, the it, 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 it's, it's a big question in terms of, um, that could take a long time to answer. And I, I, won't, I won't get into all of it, but I, I think that we, we, we're, not, we're not there. We're not at the game. I know the guys from Fulminense who I think were export were the Brazilian champions about three years ago, and they were exporting more players to Europe than, than, than I think any other South American club. Uh, I was talking to them. Their kids only play futsal till the age of nine. And what they wanted the FA to do is to write a futsal to field piece in the curriculum there because the FA is very good at doing things like that. We've actually got that at our club now. I think we're one of the first to have that. Um, but the issue is over here I think we've we've gone through a we've gone through a, a revolution which which is good uh, we've got we've gone to age specific coaching which is good we've got that embedded and you know throughout the EPP system if you're talking elite and if you're talking through the other um, subsidiary sort of coaching qualifications you get from the FA we are doing that we're approaching that and I think you're seeing more technically gifted players coming through and um, what I'm talking about is, if you're talking of grassroots, if you really want to mine the talent that's around there, is to put in place a system of, of giving kids a very good skill base at a very early age and do it naturally. 
So you do it playing football, you do it having fun, mm. and, and we don't do that. So I think it's a combination of the two. Some of the technical stuff that we've now got in our in our coaching in this country, which is good, and I think it's as good as, as, as it is abroad, but alongside of that is producing this broad base of players who will naturally develop the skills that you've seen in the, in the Argentinians and the Brazilians and, and all the South Americans and all the Spanish. I mean, a lot of people are concerned, though, that, for example, 11 aside football is becoming harder and harder to run teams, get people to play, Everybody, no one's got any time, everyone's time poor. And so these things like five-a-side have become massive, haven't they, because of this. But in itself, that, that can be a problem. Yeah, it, it is. And, and I, I certainly looked at this when I was at the FA because I was looking at um, how you develop... Um I would develop players as an issue because I, I was a player and I, and I actually believe that I played 10 seasons in, in, in the Football League as a part-time pro out of 12 seasons. So that was an indictment on full-time pros. And so I was looking specifically at this area as how do you improve? And I came across the age-specific coach and I looked at the French system with Julier. But at the same time, I came across futsal. And, and futsal to me, it was so obvious when you looked at it. The problem that we had at the time was, of course, we were building Wembley. Uh, and the, the blueprint was down for what was then Burton and is now St. George's. And, and as a consequence, uh, and the FA was, was basically bust, so f financially it was difficult to, to follow through. So to put futsal into this country, you then have to start putting in lots of facilities. Uh, there was at the t and, and we just didn't have the money to do that, and I knew that there was no point in pushing that at, the, at that point in time. Um, and at the same time, there was a debate going on because the small-sided game was clearly being addressed as an issue um, by the FA, and what you saw were a lot of commercial enterprises who came in and um, started to put uh, pits down, and, and, and you saw uh, 3G pitches appearing. Well, they were commercial, and they were out with the gift of the FA, which some people may say is a good thing, some people may say is a bad thing. I think futsal, um, and this is why it's a it's a business conference, because th there is an opportunity business-wise for people to do that again. And one of the developments that's quite interesting is if you look at what's happening in the States, in the States, it's taken off. Now, OK, they've got a Hispanic community in there that's probably driving football from grassroots, um, and, and this is very much seen as an Hispanic game to some extent. But equally, they also had a professional five-a-side league many years ago in the 70s and 80s. They like things fast and furious. They accept the point you're making, and that is mm. time, time, we're time paupers. Uh, but what's really interesting, some of the big entrepreneurs, and the Americans always do this well when they commercialize things, are starting to look at it. So people who would be the equivalent of Abramovich over there and people who are into um, American football over there are starting to back the development of a professional league over it, and it's really expanding and exploding mm -hmm. in the States. And that's an opportunity here for people. What about the professional clubs, finally? You know, Tottenham's and Manchester United. I mean, have they shown any interest? Or would, would they be good partners in something like this? They would, but my concern is that, that if it becomes solely the remit of, of the Premier League, um, then so many people miss out on it. You know, like a club like Tranmere, for example, can develop in in, mm. on, in, in Merseyside. Can develop so, such an affinity for football. You can develop good players, etc. Mm. Can I ask you've introduced it obviously to Tranmere. How has it been received by the pros and the the yeah, younger players at the club? It, it, it's it's not it's not f for the pros at this point in time. It's within the academy. Okay, so. and it's within the development of the academy. Uh, and they enjoy they enjoy playing. Uh, yeah, everybody enjoys playing football, and that's one of the good things about about it as a, as a sport. You know, if you want somebody to practice it, then they they need to enjoy what they do. Mm -hmm. But you you can recognise and see that that it's um it, it's uh, it, it's something that's that's um that's worth me and it merits this conference yeah. basically. Okay, brilliant. Uh, listen, thank you for coming in. Just quickly, there'll be loads of people listening to this that thinking, okay, that sounds interesting. How do I find out more? Is there a website they can go to? Yeah, I mean, Futsal Focus are are, are a business that's uh, putting this on with us. They're people who um who, who promote. Uh, the futsal industry and and if if you go to www.futsalfocus.net uh, uh, slash conference you you'll get the details of it and the the guys at futsal focus work really hard they've brought lots of people from around the world from uh rail betis from america in particular as well uh, and in asia it's booming so they brought people from all over the world and uh, if if there are people out there whether it's players whether it's kids whether it's people who commercially operate five side pitches um it, there's a real opportunity to come and learn uh, mm. about this about this growing sport okay sounds very exciting good luck with it thank you for yeah, coming in mark uh, that was mark palace the tramier chairman and former fa chief exec we've got still loads more to come including in this hour falls panel but next up we'll be speaking to the moose who's at the chelsea press conference